Hey, go getters Welcome back to another episode of the Pursuit Sunday Sit-Down Edition, where we go live every week to share with you the big ideas you need to grow yourself, your business, and your impact. Uh, we got a big one here for you today. We are discussing five productivity hacks that Katie and I tested. We put them to the test over the past few months, and we are going to let you guys know what works, what didn't, so you guys can use them in your week, in your life, in your business to help you guys increase your productivity this week. So speaking of introductions, hey, I'm Patrick. I'm Katie. All right, so we got uh, these five major things, and make sure you hang out to the very end because we have about about four bonus ones we want to save for you guys. For those of you who say to the end, we've tested as well. We got to make sure we give you guys all the the goods. So, oh man, how's your how's your Sunday going? It's pretty good. Yeah, I I showered and I jumped right into this thing. So I'm like, I got my coffee. I'm ready. I had lots of uh, kid and dog snuggles. Ooh, kid and dog snuggles. I posted a picture on Instagram. Oh, I will have to. I was so busy doing stuff. I, I missed it. <laughs> All right, so let us let me just set the stage a little bit here for you guys before we, we go into this too much. Um, life is hard. There's lots of, <laughs> everyone knows life is hard, but there's lots of things that distract us. And when we're not able to have one of those great days where we feel good at the end of it, you know, you ever have one of those days where you just feel like you kind of like you wasted it? Like what happened to the day? I was just was here and it was gone and... You don't really feel good about yourself when you do that. But in reverse of that, when you have a day where you've lived it, where you've really put it in, and then you sit down at the end of the day, that's what builds confidence. That's what builds self-esteem. Doing the things you said you would do, crossing those things off the list, if you're a list crosser offer, in, reveal. Yeah, I totally am. Um, <laughs> uh, so we'll discuss more about that stuff, but we want to help you guys do that. So let's talk about these five things that we've tested and the question that we guys we have for you guys the whole time today and feel free to jump in the comments and let us know or just say hi uh, what keeps you focused what keeps you on track with what you've got to do I don't want to prime you in any way but telling you here's what it might be for you let us know in the comments below we'll talk about it live on the broadcast so let's jump right into number one here so as we were talking about these things we've been trying over the past few months uh, number one on the list this one's big for me. And then Katie and I are going to go back and forth and say what we thought of it individually. And actually, you know, before we before we jump in, I'm a little I'm a little ahead of myself. It's probably the coffee talking at this point. You uh, are. You I, are. I, so I, I, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just here to just look. Uh, yeah. Well, you look uh, gorgeous. Oh, yeah. 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 Just yeah. <laughs> oh, there's one major thing we need to discuss first. Uh, Katie and I are not the same person. Surprising. We're not twinsies. Can you tell? Uh, we're wired quite differently. Mm -hmm. And as we talk about today, I want you guys to see who you I kind of connect with more in terms of your personality. Now, I'll start off with things we have in common right away because I want you guys to understand that things that work and don't, we've done them enough to see there's patterns there, different types of people. There's different systems, different productivity hacks that work for some people based on who they are and some that just don't work at all. So mm -hmm. uh, raise your hand if you're an introvert. Yeah. Okay. We got that one in common. I think that, that, might, be where, that might be where it is. How else? How else? What's going on? How are we different that people might want to know about as we before we jump into this? Well, first, the let me just say the funny thing about being different is that sometimes Patrick will be doing something and I'm like, God, why is that so important to you? <laughs> why are you so focused on it? <laughs> hey, like, listen. like what's the what's the thing with that? So. That's just the one thing. And so like, I'm just like going to offer a piece of uh, advice that nobody asked for. Yeah, but perfect, if you've yeah. got your partner who needs to do a thing to make his day or her day go better, just like let him, what can I do to support you in that thing yeah. and give it to you? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Or or the same thing to me. Like if I really feel like I guess if I can do, it's going to come up. I'll tell you what it is. It's about waking up early. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Some of us like to stay up late. And work on stuff because the muse hits and That's you've got to work on stuff. That's my windows are. And I'm like, see you later. <laughs> Could you go to bed soon? Because I am, you know, going to be woken up when you come to bed. So, but you're like, yeah, go to bed. It's mm -hmm. fine. Just do the thing that you need to do to make your day go better. And you're going to just be, you know, more successful during the day. Yep. And it's just what I want. So if you can, you know, mm -hmm. find the give and take of that stuff with your partner, that's great. Yeah. So the other way that I would say that we are different, and we'll leave it here. We don't want to give away too much. 
Uh, I would say that I am more of a right brain creative type. Um, would you say that you are a right brain creative or some more left brain? Where are your tendencies? Where you tend I to think, lie? I think I'm more of a, a left brain person, but I do have like a lot going in my uh, going on in my mind. Yes, silently all the time. So I think that's a lot of right brain act, right brain action. Yeah, just because I'm not like particularly artistic, but I do have a lot of imagination and thoughts going on in my head. And I would say that I'm like constant flood of ideas. Con it's just like it, it just doesn't shut up. It's. But I'm definitely more, you know, left brain. Yeah. So let's, with that as set as a disclaimer and kind of set up, let's jump right into this. Uh, number one on the list is a morning priming ritual to put our mi mind state in the right state of mind. So a lot of the, uh, if you go on the YouTube, if you go on the internet, you'll see a lot of people talking about this particular thing from Tony Robbins to all, all the coaches and everyone in my industry the same way. There, the advice is if you want to be productive, if you want to make the most out of your day, take five minutes out of your morning and prime your mind for success. Now that obviously looks like a couple of different things. So I'll just start off here. Here's what I do to prime my mind for success. Um, and there's a couple of different ways that this will show up in the world for different people. For me, uh, this might fall into the mantra category or the anything. And it actually has to do with what I'm wearing on my wrist right now. So uh, what I do every morning, uh, and I will share this with you guys, is before I get into my day, or at least before I get too far into my day, what I'll do is I'll grab this little bracelet here and I will say a, a little mantra to myself to get myself in the right state of mind. And it goes something like this. Uh, it begins with the phrase, today I rise. Today I rise to do my best, to be my best, and to shine my light on this world. And then I say something affirmative to myself, like um, my joy becomes the joy of others, my teachings transform lives, and the legacy of my life comes down to the impact I choose to make today. And then I swoop it on my wrist and I go, make it count. So if you ever see me and it's on this side next to my watch, I haven't done it yet. That's like your cue. If you're watching videos, like, oh, he hasn't done it yet. But if it's on this hand, <laughs> I've absolutely done it. And I have seen as I'm doing this, as I'm visualizing myself being the person I want to be and doing the things I want to do, it just sets me up for success. So I'm going to say right now, does this work? Yes. For me, it absolutely does. Have you done anything like this or do you something different? And do you agree that this is a thing that people should be doing? So I have mildly given this a shot. My so <laughs> I can't confession mildly. mildly. I try. I tried to get her to do it. It is yeah. highly suggested to me. Yes, you know Patrick highly suggested to me, but I haven't really given it a shot. So does it work for me? I not at this point. It's not working for me. Hmm. But I will say that you know, um, you know, starting school, Will's been pretty nervous, mm. and so I've been saying today's going to be a great day. Mm. Today's going to be a great day. Say it back to me. Today's going to be a great day. Mm. And, you know, if you say it, it's funny something about you physically do it, and then you hear it, and then you hear somebody else say it, Here and it then is. you see it on your there face. It so it's like all this reinforcement. So mantras really do work. Today's going to be a great day. It, it That's so simple, but, you know, if you wake up and you're kind of like, mm, you know, you're whining about stuff already, and you, but if you put it in your head, today's going to be a great day, mm -hmm. you you're way more likely to have a great day. 100%. I mean, you can you can look at this from a couple of different places. I mean, which which one would you bet on? Two sailors leave the port. One of them has no direction, no compass, no idea where they're going. They're just going to go wherever the wind takes them. I mean, it sounds exciting, but um and then the second sailor has a compass, a map, a direction, a focus, and they know exactly where they're going no matter where the wind blows. Which sailor would you bet on? Right? The second one too. I mean, that's that's really the same idea is put yourself in that position to be primed for success and you'll find that you're much more productive, much more focused, and you actually find yourself doing the things that you said that you would do. Even if it's just a magnification about 20 to 30 percent, I'll take that 20 to 30 percent boost uh, mm -hmm. for me personally. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So this one, I think, are we in agreement that this one, or do you have a different version? You do you talk about visualization or deep imagining. Do you, do you want to talk about that now as an alternate to this? Well, you know, having a visualization of what you want or going into like a meditative state and thinking about, you know, it, it's actually like much more complicated than the mantra that you yeah. gave an mm -hmm. example of, you know, it's going to take a lot more time. So like, like 
having a, a imagining of you know a real scenario about what's going to happen, I think will, is a little longer and maybe a little mm. more complicated than mm. a mantra. I was going to say just a mantra, but it's not just a mantra. No. But just you know the mantra is a little different, but so maybe not a daily mm-hmm. practice of this deep meditation and imagining the scenario, but that definitely has a place too. Okay. Uh, number two, let's jump right into number two. Uh, this is the newest one, I think, on the list for us. We implemented this about th- three, four weeks ago, and we gave this one a try. Uh, again, a lot of the research and everyone's saying, hey, listen, if you want to be successful, if you want to be productive, do this one. Here it is. Waking up early, which means also going to bed early. And you just, you know, you doxed me on that one just a second ago. Like, hey, there's a there's one cog in the wheel in this family with the going to bed early part. <laughs> Uh, so can you speak to the, how impactful that has been for you going to bed early okay. or getting no, up early? It's not both. going to bed early has not had much of an impact on me, except that it allows me to get up early. Uh. So getting up early has been awesome. Um, I, so I'll usually set my alarm for like a little bit before six, which mm-hmm. is pretty early and kind of starting to suck because it's been dark. So that acts like an extra that, layer. Yeah, of Michigan, challenge. Michigan has changed. A yeah, bit. we're we're changing right now, and but getting up early before anybody else is awake allows me to do what I need to do to get my mind right for the day, which usually includes exercise, uh, maybe reading something that's inspirational or mm. you know d- based on you know personal development, maybe. Um, writing in a journal. So like these are all some more things that we're going to talk about. Yeah. But um, it gives me time to do those things, but I don't have to worry about anybody else. Ooh, I don't yeah. go on my email. I don't definitely don't go my work email because no one's paying me to work at the five o'clock in morning hour. If you pay me more, maybe I will do that for Entrepreneur you. Entrepreneur <laughs> life's a little different, but you know, we do what we can. Yes. So it's, but it's my time. And mm-hmm. I would even suggest for an entrepreneur, you mm-hmm. need to take that time for yourself too. 100%. Don't get on your email at in the five o'clock a.m. hour. That's your time. She's saying that directly to me, folks. This isn't, that was, that was, that was a, that was a no, sweep in my you direction. Said, you for said sure. entrepreneurs have a different life. Uh, well, but like, yeah, no, we got to, we got to keep it I'm accountable su- here. I'm suggesting that you need to take that time for yourself. And sometimes it does mean getting up really early. Like if you have kids mm-hmm. who get up really early, I'm, bleh, I, that's the worst. Yeah. But like if you got five o'clock wake up time kids, I hate to say wake up at four o'clock, mm-hmm. but maybe you need to wake up at four. Maybe you need to go to bed at 9 p.m. and wake up at four. It's going to give you time to do all that stuff and take it all for yourself. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to feel bad because you're not like, oh, please go watch TV or, you know, uh, you know, ask mm-hmm. your daddy for that thing, you know, do you have the time for yourself? No one needs anything from you. You are going to do what you want to do and have no guilt. And so like all those things that you say, I'm going to do for myself today, you can get most of them done. I it's love that. kind of awesome. I love that phrase you said. I'm going to kind of pause here for a second. You said the things you do for yourself. And I think that's, oh man, I don't want to go too deep into that because I feel like that would be like, oh my gosh, we should talk about that. But I just wanted to kind of give a quick mention that a lot of things we're talking about it all kind of kind of comes down to is doing this for you, like helping you be at your best. Not, we're all kind of in the service of other people. We're all here to make an impact. I just believe that to be fundamentally true. But also we have to remember, we have to include ourselves among the people that we take care of. And if half an hour in the morning is going to just give you a little extra personal juice to do the things that you care about, even if you're, you know, you've got like 2.5 kids and all the stuff that's in the statistics uh, and they're younger, uh, I still think it's it's worth it to give yourself that time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I will say this in terms of the practicality. So for this one, for me, uh, does this one work for me? Getting up early and going to bed early. Okay, there's two parts of me. One <laughs> confession. One part of me is like, oh man, um, yeah. When I do it, it feels really good, and I really, I just feel so much better about my morning when I've accomplished more by 10 a.m. than most people do by 10 p.m. Like that feels phenomenal to get up early, rise and shine like that. Um, you know, bug. Uh, so mm-hmm. that's I really believe that's powerful, and I'm also kind of negotiating with myself the reality that. I have this creative burst around 10 p.m. And it's like there's another part of me that just doesn't want to let it go and just be there. So I'm still in negotiation, but I think it's pretty clear at this point for me, if you guys want to be more productive, if you want to make a big, bigger impact in your day, absolutely rise and shine. And you got to go to bed early 
to make that happen. Yeah. And just to emphasize that if you are, you know, employed by someone else, you work, my suggestion is work when you're at work and take the time for yourself when you're not at work. So you're going to, and you're going to be better all around. Maybe if you have a flexible schedule, like Patrick has a more flexible schedule mm-hmm. than I does, then, then, than I does, than then I, I do. <laughs> Then work, English. <laughs> then work it the way it works. But for me, when I have to be at work at eight, that means I have to leave, you know, a little bit after seven to get mm-hmm. to work on time. And that's pretty early. So like if I don't do the stuff in the morning, it's never going to get done. Mm-hmm. And so that's something that I give for my to myself and I reserve it for myself. And it's bordering on non-negotiable at this point. Mm, so it really, like really works for me. All right, so for the sake of time, we're going to pile through these and make sure you stay to the end because we have a couple of bonus ones we want to talk to you guys about. Um, Again, the question of the day, and this is for you in the comments below, is what keeps you focused? What do you do? I mean, are you talking sticky notes? Like, what do you do to stay on track, to stay focused, and put yourself in the best state of mind to get the most out of your day? So let's get back into some of these things that we've tried. Number three, uh, this is going to be a quick one for me, uh, AM exercise. The idea that there's lots of studies, and I actually have a couple here that I can mention, and just it's overwhelming. The evidence is overwhelming at this point. If you want to be more productive, if you want to get the most out of your day, it's not just about getting up early. It's about getting up and starting your day with some movement, some exercise, getting your lungs moving, activating all of the um, the great – there's so many chemical benefits, but it, it all the studies are very clear on this. Exercising in the morning is an incredible productivity hack to get you focused, get you going, and keep you going for the rest of the day. Uh, Katie, any thoughts on this before we go into the voting? Oh, yeah, 100%. And I'm going to suggest that it doesn't even need to be like super strenuous, hard exercise at 6 Mm a.m. It can be walking, Mm -hmm. and even walking has been shown to literally grow and improve your brain. Mm -hmm. So it's so healthy for your body and it's healthy for your brain. And if you're walking outside, if the weather's still good, you get to be outside, you get to get that fresh air before you might be, Mm -hmm. you know, locked in a building for the rest of the day. So that's another thing that I love doing. Sometimes I get excited and I'll do harder exercise. Um, Patrick likes to go to the gym. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, it just depends. You could do anything. So just some kind of movement to get your body moving and give yourself that uh, that gift in the morning. Yeah. The gift of exercise is so good for you. I agree. And and just to give you guys a quick thing. So here's some here's some quick studies. Uh, what the studies are showing, I got my notes here. It just, just, just headlines. If you just search benefits of exercise in the morning, here it goes. Uh, regular exercise changes the brain to improve memory and skills and thinking skills. Exercise can boost your memory and, sorry, that was the same one. Uh, Physical activity is good for your concentration. And it just goes on and on and on, all these benefits. It puts you in a good mood. It activates all your uh, dopamine systems, all your, it it boosts your immune system. It does all these things that absolutely make difference. So in other words, do I see the difference for myself on the days that I exercise? Because I'm the, I'm the researcher one. I'll I'll always like, I exercise today. How do I feel? And I'll quantify it because I'm a nerd like that. Uh, So I have all that growing data, but does it make a difference? I'm ready to to vote 100 percent yes 100 percent yes okay 100 percent yes vote <laughs> applause there we go we got it okay in sync all right number number four out of five we're going to move through these pretty quickly um journal i, I don't want i want to kind of lump this one a little bit but the 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 productivity hack kind of out here is that journaling or brain dumping or just getting things out of your mind and on paper has a noticeable impact on your performance throughout the day katie what are your thoughts on this uh, I agree. And, mm-hmm. but you and I have, you know, we obviously talked about what we're going to talk about before we yeah. get on this show. Yes, we did. And so we kind of have a different idea about mm-hmm. what is uh, what counts more, the, yeah. more valuable. Mm-hmm. And obviously, again, we're different. So I'm suggesting that journaling is really helpful. Now, it's maybe not something that you need to do every day, mm-hmm. but journaling, and it's something that I was kind of like, oh, why are you talking about journaling to me again? <laughs> I know, oh, it's so weird. Like, I'm going to write, and I don't know what to write. What am I going to write? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Wait, pause here everyone should understand uh this this is the conversation that we have in our house every day i'm like katie i'm trying this new thing let's do it with me and then i get some sort of like that face (laughs) right there (laughs) another thing to try (laughs) this is what it must be like living with a coach Uh, it must be terrible in every way so i continue smoking (laughs) so many you know so many people who i think have some like weight in this area of like making your day awesome or suggesting Mm -hmm. journaling and i'm like i don't even get it like how what does that even mean for me what's Mm -hmm. it going to do so i gave it a try 
And what it is, you know, I will get something in my head or I'll identify something that's like been bothering me or yeah. like triggering me or like I have this thing and I'm like, why am I so hooked on it? Why can't I just let it go? Mm. And then I can journal about it and it helps me sort of work it through my brain and sort of get it out of my brain a little bit and yes. put it on the paper. 100%. So, um, and then sometimes, like I said, you don't have to do it every day, but you can even write a little bit and just something you could use a journal for, you know, uh, writing down something good that happened to yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be giving maybe some journaling prompts in my Instagram. So if you tune in, I'll just be able to give some suggestions and some things that I'm working on. But I say journaling is actually really helpful, surprisingly. I, I was surprised, but I give I give that a yes. I, I give this a yes as well, um, but from a little bit of a different perspective, um, I'm going to say the idea of brain dumping. If I'm carrying something, an idea, like I said, my brain moves at 100 miles an hour. If I don't put the ideas down on paper, it just kind of, it, it's like another ball I'm juggling. Another, just another one. And I'm just like, hey, but if I take this ball and I put it on paper, my brain will forget, the, the paper won't forget it. So once it's down on paper, a relaxation response happens in me. Where I'm like, okay, it's out, it's down. I won't, the paper won't forget it. I can come back to it later, that good idea I was having or whatever. So 100%, I am more productive in that relaxed state mm -hmm. now that I've gotten stuff out versus trying to like add it to the plate of things I'm juggling. So uh, absolutely yes for that. Last on the list, this is probably, we save like the most, con like this is the one, like everyone says. Everyone says, if you want to be more productive, get a daily planner. Get some sort of organizational system, do your to-do list and check things off and things like that. Uh, this is actually where Katie and I differ a little bit here. So what are your thoughts on productivity systems or productivity journals or whatever we want to call them? We might be in de development of one right now, but that's a different story. Go ahead. So... I don't really use a daily planner. I obviously have a calendar, so mm. I know when my appointments are or whatever I'm doing something at work or if we're doing something after or with the mm. kids have an appointment or something like that. I do have a calendar, but a daily planner, well, I'm like, I'm going to do gym in the morning and mm. then I'm going to, you know, drive to work and like get like down to the dirty details mm -hmm. about it. I'm sorry, but I don't actually use a daily planner. Mm -hmm. But the reason is because I... I am able to do very high level multitasking in my brain and just keep it all right at the ready. Mm -hmm. And so um, I'm just the kind of person who can keep a lot at the tip, right at the tip of my memory. And I am not opposite, absolutely opposite. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I don't actually utilize a daily planner, but um, if I do get to the point where I have a lot going on, I do do a checklist mm -hmm. or a to-do list. But yeah. the thing about me is that if I've done everything right and I have woken up early, exercised, journaled, worked through that emotional issue that I'm having, mm -hmm. um, spent some time doing something for myself, all the stress or negative feelings that are hanging on are flushed out and they're gone and it makes it much easier for me to just remember what I need to do and actually not have any like procrastination problems struggling through it. So for me, it's... If I can clear these, you know, things, negative feelings, things, whatever they are that uh -huh. are holding me back from being the most productive person I can be, if I can handle those things, I can move on to the bigger things uh -huh. that I might write in a planner. So my focus is on the other stuff and planners are good. And let's hear from you. Why yeah, do you think so? so? This, okay. So as we said in the beginning, um, right brain creative, uh, very strong, also introvert, introvert more leaning strongly on the left brain side. You told me yesterday, uh, you have an iron trap memory that nothing goes, it's like once it's in there, it's locked in there. Yeah. Which is very interesting to be married to someone like yeah. this who remembers everything. <laughs> it's true. Everything you've ever said or done. <laughs> anyway. Um, but with the- with Good the, things. We're talking about productivity planners. Good um, things good also. Thi oh, good things, amazing things. So now I can trust you, you remember everything. Yeah. So for the person who has this kind of brain, you may not even need a productivity planner. But if you're me, you can't survive without it. So to sit down in the morning and say, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to accomplish. Here's what order I'm going to do it in because otherwise I'll jump all over the place because I'm like, 
monkey jumping in a tree and just branch to branch to branch. Mm -hmm. This keeps me focused, keeps me on target, uh, and helps my, my parent ADD brain stay on track. And it's essential for me to get anything done. And the days that I use it and the days that I don't are noticeably, dramatically different days. So I highly recommend daily planners um, or habit trackers. We actually have some habit trackers we're developing uh, soon this, this month. We'll tell you guys more about that later. Mm -hmm. So do these, we covered the big five. So here's kind of the question. Do these things that we've been trying for months, do they work? I'm ready to say absolutely they work, but there's kind of one subtext <clears throat> underneath it, which is it It sort of depends on what works for you. So that's why we're asking the question today, like what, what, what do you do? What helps you be focused? Let us know in the comments below. We respond to all comments. And if you comment live or live, we'll actually post it live on the show. So that's the thing that we want to talk about. But we have a couple bonus ones we saved just for the end. So hang here. We've got some big ones. If you guys want to make sure you share out this, let other people know this conversation is happening. We'd absolutely love it and appreciate it. And obviously, if you want to really help the channel and help us, put a like on this video. It's all about helping the algorithms. But also show us some love back. Subscribe, follow us. If you want to miss any future beats, if you're on YouTube, make sure to hit that bell to be notified of any future content whenever we go live. Now let's come back to it. Here's our bonus, bonus round of stuff we're gonna talk about. Um, this one comes from, we're just gonna rapid fire these. Uh, a big one that's popular, uh, and there's multiple versions of this, but it's idea of start, do something small in the morning to start the productivity engines going. One of the biggest ones I hear out there is a very simple one, make your bed. Just make your bed in the morning before you do anything else. And the very act of doing this small, productive thing puts you in a productive mindset for the rest of the day. Now, we've been doing this for a good 45, 60 days. Katie, did you found any benefit in making the bed every morning before yeah. we even leave the room? Yeah. Well, definitely. And I will say that since I'm the one who's usually like waking up earlier, you are kind of the person who makes the bed. But mm -hmm. it is very nice to have a tidy looking mm -hmm. bedroom when you walk back in at the end of the night. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when you're going to go to bed. So yeah. that's all. That's awesome. Okay. I, I will say that it absolutely, it's kind of one of those subtle things. It's hard to trace to see like, did it really make an impact? I'm going to, I'm going to venture on yes at this point. I really feel like it kind of gets, it gets those productivity engines going. So I personally recommend if you haven't tried this one, make your bed in the morning. Uh, number two, this is another honorable mention. Um, it's just more than honorable mention is gratitude journals. Taking time every day to focus on what you're grateful for. I'm we don't even need to discuss this. There is so much study, so much evidence that mm -hmm. absolutely prove that by putting yourself in a positive state of mind at the beginning of the day, what you're grateful for, the, all the beauty in the world, that puts you in an incredibly creative state of mind. It puts you in a productive state of mind. It takes life and puts it in the right perspective. That's a, that's a big one. That's a big one. So yeah. I highly, highly recommend any sort of gratitude practice. It comes in many, many forms. We can talk about more about that at a later time. And especially <clears throat> if you're like in a bad mood or something, oh, yeah. you get, in, get into a little gratitude and then that can help shift where you are. Because if you're in a bad mood or, you know, stinking thinking, stinkin as you thinkin', like to yeah, say, yeah. you know, having just remembering, you know, what you're grateful for is just a huge, that can help turn your mind around. A hundred percent. We got two more. This one, now this is, I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna say this directly into the camera. Hi, I cannot survive without this next thing. I would not get anything done in my day if it wasn't for, the, including remembering to pick my child up from school. <laughs> the reminder app on my phone. It is like, I don't know how I get anything done without it. If I like reminder, check this, reminder, check that. I mean, I even use it for mindfulness during the day. Hey, take three breaths it, every day, one p every day, 1 p.m. My phone reminds me, hey, stop what you're doing, take three breaths. Like, I don't know if I'd be as productive or in a po as positive state I am without the reminder app on my phone. If, if you haven't used it for that function, absolutely think of it. What yeah. do you think? Oh, why not? It'll give you, you know, even a reminder to remind you. <laughs> <laughs> remind me to remind myself about Set this Set a reminder, you know, 20 minutes or or the day before you have to do a thing or 20 minutes before you're one. It's so great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So reminder apps. If you are all about the reminder apps, let us know in the comments. Um, our last one for you guys today as we close out this episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I see a bunch of you guys are, are live right now. Um, this one is, I would say... Don't even go forward in your life trying to be more productive, achieve more things if you don't do this one. And this tip comes from the book called Essentialism. If you haven't read the book Essentialism, highly, highly recommended. It's it's not a breakthrough concept. I think we've all heard this one before. But the idea is you have a plate, a mental plate. 
and if you're trying to get stuff done, but you're just throwing more stuff on the plate, at some point the plate's just going to break. You know, like you need to ask yourself a very important question. And it goes something like this. What do I have to give up to get what I want? What do I have to give up to get what I want? So if I want to get to the gym, I was like, you know, New Year's resolution, all that stuff. Hey, you know, as a goal getter, someone who's going after stuff, well, you and I both know, you got to ask yourself this question. That's one of those tough conversations. A carefrontation, if you will, you got to have with yourself. Like, hey, listen, I really want to get this book written. I really want to create this course. I really want to get this business off the ground. I really want to get in better shape. Whatever it is that you want and your goals and your dreams, your ambitions, part of the conversation with that to be more productive is actually to clear stuff off of your plate instead of just trying to add more to it. So the idea mm -hmm. of essentialism is what's the most important thing and what can I take off my plate, including Netflixing and including that time you spend doing that thing you do for fun. How can I get more time in my day? I can't. So I have to make room for my goals in my life. Uh huh. And if you are in a position, if you can hire out something, like if, if you make a list of everything that you need to do, I did this a while ago and I was mm. like, there's no time for absolutely anything. Yeah. I'm never going to be able to do anything. I don't have time to go to the gym. I don't have time to do this or this or this. And then, you know, I kind of like messed around with it and I changed my mind and I said, mm. well, I do have some time. And so, you know, changing mm. your priorities is something, but also if you have the means, if you can hire something out, like let's say. Um, house cleaning is has just fallen by the wayside How much hours all the time house, yeah, because cleaning, cleaning yeah. the house, like it's something that like you have to do it. You have to mow the lawn. You have to clean the house. If you have the means to hire somebody else to mow your lawn, that's going to give you three extra hours It'll on the weekend. Time. Yep. You know what I mean? And it's, it's all about, it's all about choices. We do clean our own house and Patrick mm. mows the lawn. So like, but we, we support each other in different ways. So just figuring out what can you cut and just the stuff that you mm -hmm. kind of have to do, but it's just not adding anything aside from having a clean house, which is nice, but yeah. like it doesn't really move yeah. your business forward or it doesn't make me a better lawyer or anything like that. It doesn't. <laughs> so, you yeah. know, if you can figure out how to trim off some of that stuff, um, that's also kind of a good idea too. I agree. So today, again, we're talking productivity hacks. We've tried what worked, what didn't, uh, but more importantly, what worked for us based on our different personalities and type of person we are. So I guess, are you more like me? Did you find yourself more connected to what I was saying? Do you find yourself more like Katie? What worked for you? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, uh, we want to thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Pursuit Sunday Sit Down Edition. Well, let's see if we can get this one right. We're going to give this one a go. Okay. Are you ready? Ready. Okay. Until we see you again, may the fire within lead the happiest heights. And the road you travel be lined with light. Hashtag nailed it. All right, guys. We'll see you <laughs> next time. Bye. Bye.